Hi there, my name is Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today's video I'm going to do a little unboxing a book haul. I did a cheeky wee order on the works because there was one book in particular that I wanted from the works because you could get it cheaper than elsewhere. So I added that to the basket and then saw that if you spend £30 you get free delivery and I thought well why not? If you don't know The Works, it is a shop that does really big discounts on books. They're usually quite popular books. They have a section on their website that is specifically book talk books, which I think a lot of the ones that I've gone for are. I can't really remember everything that I ordered, so it's gonna be an exciting little unboxing for all of us. This is the box. I'm gonna unopen it and we'll see what treasures lie within. Ooh, fun! Yes, already. The little sticker says Love by Millions on TikTok. Let's start with this one. I had kind of seen the cover of this one, probably on TikTok, but I didn't really know what it was about. The cover is beautiful. This is called My Dark Romeo. Oh, it's by two authors, Parker S. Huntington and LJ Shen. And it says, he's my dark Romeo, but this isn't a love story. Ugh, oh, the sticker is part of the cover. That's annoying. Some Romeos deserve to die. It was supposed to be a harmless kiss at a lavish debutante ball, a clandestine moment with a handsome stranger but unlike his namesake my Romeo isn't driven by love he's fueled by revenge to him I am a chess piece leverage his rivals betrothed to me he's a man deserving of poison a dark prince I refuse to marry he thinks I'll accept my fate while I plan to rewrite it and in my story Juliet doesn't die but Romeo he perishes. I get why this is a TikTok favourite because it sounds like it is full of angst. I'm not quite sure if this is going to be romance. I don't know, it sounds like kind of dark romance but the, the way the blurb is reading sounds more like enemies to lovers but it sounds like it's just gonna stay enemies to enemies. <laughs> From the blurb anyway. I don't know what this is going to be like. I've not really seen reviews or anything so I only know that it's been loved by millions on TikTok. I really like the cover. Next up we have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. It's got a Stephanie Garber quote on the front which is exciting. This has a sticker on the back. Oh the sticker's right over the blurb. Orphaned as a child, Signa Farrow has been raised by a string of guardians each more interested in her wealth and her well-being and each has met an untimely end. Her only remaining relatives are the elusive Hawthorns, an eccentric family living at Thorn Grove, an estate both glittering and gloomy. When a restless spirit appears claiming she was poisoned, Signa realises the Hawthorns could be in grave danger and enlists the help of a surly stable boy to hunt down the killer. But Signa's best chance of uncovering the murderer is an alliance with death himself and as the mystery unfurls, Signa realises their growing connection may be more irresistible than she dared imagine. It's got a quote on the back by Jennifer Armentrout that says secrets, curses, mystery, romance and death. I think this one's going to be so, so good. I really liked... I didn't love The Invisible Life of Addy LaRue that much. Like reading it once was enough for me. What I really liked about that book was the kind of romantic tension between our main character and the figure of death in that book. Is he death or is he like the devil? I can't remember. But it's that kind of dynamic. So I am very excited for that aspect in this book. If it lives up, I think this could be a really quick read for me because it has everything that I enjoy. Mystery, romance, enemies to lovers. It's gonna be fun, I think, I hope. Next book I got, here I am. I'm gonna mention it in another YouTube video. I love the book Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. <laughs> It's maybe my favourite romance that I've read this year, I think. Definitely. Yes? I think so. And that is a cowboy romance. I've not really read other cowboy ro romances. I've only read Lila Sage's Rebel Blue Ranch series. And I know that Elsie Silver is a really big romance writer specifically for cowboy romances. So I wanted to give her a go. I ended up getting Wild Love, which is the first book in the Rose Hill series by Elsie Silver. Forbes may have labelled Ford Grant the world's hottest billionaire, but all he cares about is escaping the press and opening a recording studio in the gorgeous small town Rose Hill, something that comes to a screeching halt when he ends up face to face with a young girl who claims he's her biological father. After years of living in the city, Rosie comes back into town like a storm, beautiful, messy and chaotic. One wide-eyed, desperate plea for a job is all it takes for Ford to hire her. He vows to keep her at arm's length, but with her, verbal sparring is a type of foreplay, friction that soon turns to blistering heat. Ford knows damn well he shouldn't cross this line, but shouldn't and can't are two very different things, and the only thing he truly can't do 
is resist her. I don't know how I feel about there being a child in this book. I don't know how old this this young girl who's claiming he's her biological father is, but I'm not usually drawn to books that include children. <laughs> I usually find children quite annoying. Oh, there's a map in it. That's unusual that you see a map in a romance book, but oh, Sienna's growling. But I see that Rose Hill is close to Chestnut Springs and I think that Chestnut Springs is the name of her other cowboy series. So I'm gonna go into this with an open heart. I'm sorry if you can hear Sienna growling. She's watching something out the window. Yeah, sorry. I'm gonna go into this with an open mind and open heart. I'm not truly keen on this child though. Is Rosie gonna be like a nanny? This is gonna be interesting because I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this one. Oh my goodness. I do not think I'm in to order another Elsie Silver book. And I don't know if this is the first in the series, actually. <laughs> okay, I didn't realise I'd ordered another Elsie Silver book, so I also have Flawless by Elsie Silver, which I'm hoping is the first book in this series. What this series is, I don't know. The rules were simple, keep my hands off his daughter, but now I'm stuck with her. There's only one bed. <laughs> and, well, rules are made to be broken. I'm the golden boy of professional bull riding. Or at least I was until it all blew off in my face. Now my agent says I have to clean up my image so I'm stuck with his ball busting daughter for the rest of the season as my full time supervision. But I don't need a goddamn babysitter. Especially, should I be reading this in a southern accent? But I don't need a goddamn babysitter. Especially one with tight je skin tight jeans, a sexy smirk and a mouth she can't stop running. A mouth that I can't stop thinking about. Okay, I'm not gonna do that anymore. That's embarrassing. She says this means nothing. I say this means everything. She says there are boundaries we shouldn't cross, that my reputation can't take any more hits and neither can her damaged heart. I say I'm gonna steal it anyway. I, I apologize for doing a Southern accent. I prefer this blurb to the wild love blurb. It sounds like it's taking itself less seriously, which I appreciate. <laughs> It sounds way more cowboy-y. A professional bull rider. I think this one sounds like it could be fun. I didn't realise I'd got two Elsie Silver books, but hey, we're gonna jump jump into my Elsie Silver era. Okay, next up is the book that I went in to buy from the works, and that was Done and Dusted by Lila Sage, the first book in the Blue Rebel Rant series. I've already read it, I have it on my Kindle, but I love the covers of these books so much and I loved Swift and Saddled so much that I already have that physical copy and I've decided that I want to have this book series a physical copy. I didn't love this book, um, I think I gave it like 2.75 maybe, maybe even just 2.5, I can't remember, but it, this wasn't my favourite at all, but I loved Swift and Saddled and I really like Lila Sage's writing. This relationship just didn't really do it for me. I won't bother reading the blurb for this one because I can just tell you, it's about a girl called Clementine who is a professional horse rider. After she has a scare on her horse, she goes back to her hometown where she ends up falling for her brother's best friend who runs a bar. They start up a kind of secret relationship because they don't want her brother to find out. She's also dealing with overcoming her fear of getting back on back on the saddle. That's where that expression comes from. It's literal in this book. I have a book that I hadn't heard of that I decided to pick up and that is Next of Kin by Hannah Bonham Young. And this is the author of Out on a Limb, which I haven't read but I have heard of. I think it was Chandler Ainsley. She said in one of her videos that she really liked Out on a Limb, I think. I think this is just going to be a cute romance. When people pleasing Chloe learns that her birth mother has unexpectedly had another baby, she doesn't hesitate to become a kinship carer but failing to meet social services financial evaluation she is faced with a choice see her baby sister placed in foster care or participate in a new initiative where two prospective guardians join households to qualify enter warren a surly mechanics apprentice attempting to get custody of his deaf 15 year old brother from the moment warren drives up 30 minutes late blasting music out of his car Chloe's convinced that this is a very bad idea, but they eventually agree to live together for the sake of their younger si siblings. In fact, they're far more similar than she could have imagined. What started as forced begins to feel natural and far less lonely. Chemistry soon intensifies beyond what either of them can stand, but is their mutual attraction worth risking everything they fought for? So there are children in this book, which like I said, I'm against, but they're not the character's children, they're their siblings, which I think I'll prefer. This looks like it's gonna be forced proximity. I just added this to the cart to get over the £30 minimum. So I don't know if it's gonna be good. 
Oh, it has a quote by Talia Hibbert on the back. I really like Talia Hibbert, so that's a really good sign. Hey, next book I got is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. I haven't read Ninth House yet. I've had Ninth House on my shelf for so long because my friend got it for my Christmas a few years back. I think it must have been like three years back and I've still not read it because I know that I'm gonna love it. I really do know I'm gonna love it. It's dark academia, fantasy. I don't think it's romance but I think there is like romantic tension possibly. I just I know that it is gonna suit me and I've not read it yet but I'm so confident that I'm gonna like it that I did pick up the second book because once I read Ninth House I'm probably gonna want to go straight on to Hellbent. I've heard really good things about both books. I'm not gonna read the blurb for this because I'll probably end up spoiling myself for something that happens in the first book. If you don't know, you probably do know already, it is, like I said, Dark Academia. It takes place in Yale and I think our main character is called Alex, short for Galaxy, Stern, and she has a, a scholarship at Yale I think. She grew up in like difficult circumstances I'm pretty sure but she is involved within like these secret societies in Yale that I think practice occult, ma occult, mag ma occult magic. Next up I got The Witches of Vardo by Anya Bergman. I loved The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave last year. It was definitely in my top 10 books, if not my top five. I loved it so much. Um, so that is pretty much why I bought this book because that book is also about witches in Vardo. And this also has a quote by Kieran Millwood Hargrave on it. it. says it's utterly propulsive. Norway 1662. A dangerous time to be a woman. When even dancing can lead to accusations of witchcraft. When recently widowed Zigri embarks on a doomed affair with the local merchant, she is sent to the fortress at Vardo to be tried as a witch. Zigri's daughter Ingborg sets off into the wilderness to rescue her mother. Accompanying her on this quest is Marin, whose wild nature and unconquerable spirit gives Ingborg the courage to risk all she has to save her family. Also captive in the fortress is Anna Rodius, once the king of Denmark's mistress, who has been sent in disgrace to the island of Vardo. What will she do and who will she betray to return to her privileged life at court? In an age weighted against them, these witches of Vardo refuse to be victims. They will have justice. All they need to do is show their power. I think this is going to be really similar to the Mercies in a good way. I think it's interesting because there's a character in this called Marin and I'm pretty sure if my memory is serving correctly one of the main characters in the Mercies is called Marin I think. But yeah I think this is going to be empowering feminist literature I hope. Next up another book I hadn't heard of but I liked the sound of it. Tangled Up in You by Christina Lauren. I will be honest I was drawn to this book because Disney's Tangled is in like my top two Disney movies. I love Tangled and I love Aladdin so that's pretty much why I added this to the cart. Raised off the grid for most of her 22 years Ren has read hundreds of books, taught herself to paint and built a working wind power system but longs to live in the real world. So when she's accepted to at Corona College it feels like her life is finally beginning. Fitz is about to graduate top of his class and convince everyone when he's the rich handsome player that he says he is. When Ren, with her cascading blonde hair and encyclopedic brain crashes into his life. When a simple assignment forces Ren and Fitz together on a road trip, the world somehow shifts and the unlikely pair realise that maybe the key to the dreams they've both been chasing has been sitting next to them the whole time. So I think this is essentially like Tangled fanfic basically. Tangled AU fanfic. And now that I'm seeing it's in a series called the Meant to Be Collection, I'm suddenly realising that this series must be based off various Disney fairy tales because there's a one called If the Shoe Fits, Cinderella, there's By the Book, Beauty and the Beast, and there's Kiss the Girl, Little Mermaid. So I'm starting with the Rapunzel one. Um, but that'd be fun. If I like this, I'll definitely check out the other ones. I, I love a retelling and I love a road trip romance, which uh, I'm saying I love it, but I don't read them. I read one when I was a teenager that I really liked, which I can't remember the name of. I can't remember the name of it, but I really liked it. So it'll be exciting to revisit a road trip romance because I think that is such a fun way of telling a story of characters getting to know each other and falling in love and stuff. It's very When Harry Met Sally, isn't it? And then finally, the last book I have to share is a thriller or horror. You Shouldn't Have Come Here by Geneva Rose from the best-selling author of The Perfect Marriage, which I've not read. I wanted a thriller horror and this one seemed the most interesting to me. I can't remember what it's about. <laughs> 
Grace Evans, overworked and looking for a total escape from her busy life, books an Airbnb on a remote ranch. When she arrives at the idyllic getaway, she's pleased to find that the owner is a handsome man by the name of Calvin Wells, and he's eager to introduce her to his easygoing way of life. But there are things Grace discovers that she's not too pleased about. A lack of cell phone service, a missing woman, and a feeling that something isn't right with the ranch. Despite her uneasiness, the two bond and start to fall for one another. However, as her departure date nears, things change. What began as a playful romance soon turns into a complicated web of lies. Grace grows wary of Calvin as his infatuation for her seems to have morphed to obsession. Calvin fears that Grace is hiding something from him, including her reason for staying at his ranch to begin with. <laughs> I was so shocked, I threw it away. I'm hoping this is just a real page turner, like a good summer thriller, like not necessarily one that's gonna stick with me, but one that keeps me entertained. I'm not looking for much. And there you have it. That is all the books that I ordered from the works. I'm excited. I think I've got, I picked out some fun ones to read this summer actually. It's quite a lot of romance. That last thriller I think sounds like a good sunshine read. <laughs> just something fun that I can disappear into for a few hours. I hope that you have been doing well and I hope that you have an amazing upcoming week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!